and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Friends, my name is Pastor Matthias and it is a joy to welcome you to worship here at Leroy UMC. And friends, this morning is graduation Sunday. And so our worship service has actually been designed to honor and to lift up all of our church family's graduates and all graduates who may be joining us. And well, and while I'm sure that this morning is not unfolding exactly as we expected, this is still a wonderful day that gives us cause for celebration and for joy. And so congratulations to all of our graduates. And as we prepare our hearts and minds to worship the Lord our God, I would invite one of our graduates, uh, Sarah Stengel, to lead us in our opening prayer. Hi, please join me in the opening prayer. God of old endings and Lord of new beginnings, when doors close and windows shut in our lives, guide us to the new openings and new possibilities you are making. In this strange season of change, make us aware of the wonders you are up to. Fill us with excitement for all that you've prepared us for and give us the joyful visions you imagine. Lord of new beginnings, make a new beginning for us and show us a glimpse of it in this sacred time. In your name we pray, amen. Jesus, I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence Surrender all 
As this is graduation Sunday, this morning I would invite us to try something just a little bit different. Instead of passing the peace at this point in the worship service, I would actually invite you to congratulate a grad. And basically at this time, I would invite you to do that by typing a message of congratulations into the comment section below this video. Uh, it can be whatever message of encouragement or hope you would uh, like to offer, but go ahead and share a congratulations message with uh, all of our grads. And I would invite you to go ahead and do that while we hear some very special graduation music.
Brothers and sisters, this morning we gather together in spirit with a God who promises to guide us through years past and through years that lie ahead and to be there for us every step of the way. And so, friends, if you have a prayer or a praise, a joy or a concern that you would like us to be lifting up as a church family, I would invite you to go ahead and either type it into the comments section below this Facebook video, uh, or you can go ahead and text it to me directly. My phone number should be in the video description. Uh, but a, a few prayers that we've heard throughout the week that we can go ahead and lift up together. Uh, one is Gail Hannafin has asked for prayers for her sister-in-law, Mary, who was recently diagnosed with lung cancer. Gail, with you, we lift Mary up to a Savior who sits beside us when we hear devastating news and who reaches out to give us peace to process that news and strength to rise up over any challenge that may come after it. We pray that Christ might give Mary that sense of peace and strength this morning. Uh, a joy has been lifted up for uh, Marita Taylor, who had a successful procedure this past week and is now recovering well. And we certainly give thanks to a God who well, to a God whose wish is for us to thrive, who is always seeking to build us up, to equip us and empower us, and to give us health, we thank God for all the ways that God has been there for Marita and ask that God might be there with Marita for the rest of her recovery process. Uh, and of course, finally, friends, a praise and a joy that we can all lift up together as a church family is for all of our church's graduates. Uh, who certainly have every reason to be, to be proud, to be excited, and to be joyful this morning for all that they have accomplished. And we give thanks to God for all the ways that God has equipped you, empowered you, and we are excited to see all the things that God has in store for you in the years that are to come. But we thank God for all of our graduates this morning. And now, friends, I would invite us all to join our hearts and minds together in prayer, at the end of which I would invite you to say the Lord's Prayer wherever you may be, whenever you may watch this, and I would invite the Daughtries to lead us in our prayer. Please join with us in the prayers of the people. Holy Lord, you know the plans you have for us, plans to prosper us and not harm us, plans to give us a hope and a future. And Lord, we ask you to make your plans real in our lives. God, in a difficult time when very little is as we expect it to be, may you use every challenge and struggle we face to strengthen and to build us up into new men and new women. God, on a day of celebration when we rejoice for all that has been accomplished, may you fill all of us with confidence that this is only the beginning and help all to walk in eager excitement for what the future holds. And God, on this holy morning, may you make us holy so that our faith might always be stronger than our fears and the plans of the Lord might always be greater than our dreams. We ask these things in the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior, who sends us out into the world with joy and power. Now please join us in the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And we'd like to send out a special congratulations to Parker and to all the 2020 graduates. Congratulations. Good job. Well, friends, our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the very beginning of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. This is picking up the story of the disciples right where the Gospel of Luke leaves off. But Acts chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Listen now for the word of the Lord. After his suffering... He presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there 
for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And he replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And when he had heard this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of his sight. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. This is the word of the Lord. Friends, please pray with me. God of purpose, if this message helps your disciples see the plans that you make, then may it resonate with someone listening and be remembered. But Lord, if this message misses your plans, then may it be forgotten in an instant. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. That was not what the disciples expected. As incredible, as unbelievable, and as miraculous as that passage may be, none of that is what the disciples expected would happen. In the three long years since Jesus had called them, the disciples had worked more hours and listened to more lessons than could be counted. And since Jesus had risen from the grave on Easter, they had experienced more things than they could understand. And after all of this, Jesus had finally gathered all the disciples together on a hill just outside Jerusalem where the disciples finally ask the question that has been on all of their minds from the very beginning. Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And they ask this because that is what they expect is about to happen. Now, we've already talked together about how there was this dream, this expectation in first century Israel that the kingdom, the rule, the reign of God would come about when the Messiah came. And the disciples were no different. They expected that Jesus was going to bring a kingdom. And not just any kingdom either, they expected it to look and to unfold in a very particular way. When the disciples ask Jesus in that passage if he'll restore the kingdom, that word that they use really has the sense of to restore former things. It means to restore something that you already have a very clear idea of in your mind from the past. In other words, the disciples, like most first century Israelites, expect Jesus is going to bring the kingdom of David back. Through everything that they've experienced from the moment that they were called, the disciples have held out hope that all of this was going to end with Jesus establishing a very earthly, very political kingdom. The disciples expect social reform. They expect a throne and a crown and trumpets. They expect a glorious moment of triumph. Maybe they even expect a little recognition. And to be frank, they've earned it if they expect it. Again, over the past three years that the disciples have been following Jesus, they have sacrificed, they have changed, they have worked and fought over years in order to get to this one moment, and now that they are finally here with the Messiah, in one of the greatest letdowns in the Bible, Jesus doesn't do it. It is not for you to know the times that the Father has set 
Jesus says, in a way that clearly communicates that's not how things are going to go. That's not what's going to happen right now. And I imagine when the disciples heard that news, they were disappointed to say in the least. They were probably hurt, frustrated, upset, and maybe more than just a little bit angry. You can't go through that much for that long and not be just a little bit angry when your expectations for the end suddenly fall through. But the really important thing to pay attention to in this passage isn't the disciples' disappointed expectations. The really important thing to pay attention to is the way Jesus responds to their disappointment. Jesus acknowledges the disciples' frustration. They are disappointed, and that's all right. Jesus doesn't rebuke them for being a little sad. But rather than leaving the conversation there, rather than letting the disciples dwell on their disappointed expectations, Jesus redirects their attention to what is happening. And more importantly, he redirects their attention to the unbelievable things that will happen. Jesus goes on, he says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. Jesus shifts their focus and reframes the whole day because as valid and as great as their disappointment may be, their reasons to feel joy and to feel a sense of hope are even greater. And Jesus won't let the things that they expected distract them from that joy and from that hope that's all around them. Jesus doesn't want the disciples to think that just because things aren't ending as they expected, that that means the past few years have been pointless. They have done incredible things that have equipped them and changed them for even more incredible things yet to come. Jesus doesn't want their frustration over the way that that day is going to overcome their excitement for all the things that tomorrow holds. And Jesus doesn't want their disappointed dreams to distract them from the spirit, the movement, the journeys, and the miracles that are still ahead of them. Yes, the story is not wrapping up the way the disciples thought that it would, but that doesn't matter nearly as much as all the ways that the past few years have changed, equipped, and empowered them in incredible ways. Yes, the disciples are not receiving the kingdom or the glory that they thought was coming, but that is nothing compared to the fire, the purpose, and the power the Holy Spirit is bringing. And yes, the crowns, thrones, banners, trumpets, and glory that they had hoped to see that morning has been called off. But those things cannot even begin to compare with all the sights that they will see, all the things that they will feel, or all the things that they will experience over the years to come as Christ sends them out into the world, into Judea and to Samaria and to Greece and to Rome and to the very ends of the earth. Things may not be unfolding as the disciples expected them to, but that cannot and should not detract or distract from all of the incredible plans that God still has in store for them tomorrow. Plans that have not changed and plans that Christ would not have his disciples miss. So this morning, 
many people are finding that things are not going as they expected them to. The graduation parties that we planned may not be happening as we imagined. The ceremonies that we worked hard for may not be taking place as we envisioned they would. The summers that we wanted may be on hold. The jobs, the moments, the prizes, the kingdoms that we thought would come in a very particular way may not be. And while it's okay to feel a little bit disappointed, frustrated, and maybe even a little angry, don't be too discouraged. Don't be distracted. The kingdom that didn't come cannot compare with the Holy Spirit who is coming. The way that we thought the journey would end doesn't change the incredible ways that God intends for the journey to keep going. And the disappointment we may feel today can never overwhelm the hopes that tomorrow holds. Because as the disciples learned that morning as Christ left them, the things we expect today often pale in comparison to the plans that God has for us tomorrow. And thanks be to God for it. Amen. Friends, please pray with me. God of purpose and Lord of our tomorrows, on a day of great joy and of great frustration, we ask you to come and remind us of what matters. Lord, let our excitement for your tomorrow always overwhelm our dreams for yesterday. Lord, let our sense of accomplishment and power always be stronger than our shortcomings. And let our trust in your plans and in your spirit always be greater than our anxious concerns. Christ, make this a day of joy, a day of power, and a day of new hope as we thank you for all the blessings that lie behind us and as we turn towards all the wonders that you place before us. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, I would now like to invite uh, Jeff Boffman, the local principal, and Steve Ward, our youth director, to offer the graduates their own words of encouragement, uh, after which I would invite us to hear some reflections from uh, a couple of our graduates on their past four years in high school and what lies next for them. Good morning, everyone. Uh, congratulations to Parker, Dylan, Bobby, and Sarah. Uh, thank you to Pastor Matthias for inviting me to be a part of this morning's graduation message. Um, we really miss seeing the four of you at school and all of the seniors throughout this school year. Um, I know you've been doing well, and I know you're excited to graduate and move on with your life, um, but we do miss you. I want to wish all of you the best of luck in your future endeavors uh, after you graduate from Leroy High School today. Um, I know that you all have a strong faith, and you have a great family within your church and your community to support you as you go forward in life. Um, while COVID has been a very difficult adventure for all of us, there's sure to continue to be difficult paths throughout your life. So that's a great support for system for you to lean on as you go throughout this journey. Again, best of luck. Congratulations. Um, I really enjoyed being a part of your lives throughout your time at Leroy school district, um, but particularly the last four years of high school. Um, I'm sorry that we were not able to spend more time together this spring, um, but you've all worked very hard, and I know you're prepared, and you're ready to move on with the next phase of your life. So congratulations, and best of luck. Congratulations, seniors. You finally made it to graduation. Uh, what a crazy year. I mean, uh, a senior year that started off with so much promise, and then it ended, well, it ended up with those promises fulfilled. Uh, now, uh, maybe it's not the way you envisioned your senior year uh, to finish or to go. And yes, you probably did miss out on, on some, uh, some things that wasn't fair. But that in no way 
takes away from what you guys uh, have done as students and as individuals and as graduates. The accomplishments for you guys, uh, I mean, the list just goes on. Uh, it, band and chorus and musicals and sports and FFA and cheerleading. And you all went on mission trips. Um, plus, you will always have the distinction of being the class of 2020. It's likely that no other class is going to experience the same things that you have had to experience on your in your senior year. Uh, plus, you will have a unique bond with graduating classes uh, around the world, really. Um, and believe it or not, in, in some years to come, you will look back uh, with fondness and the memories and, and the talk will be uh, the, t the conversation will be positive about what you have accomplished and what you did um, at Leroy High School. But I encourage you to um, make a point to stay connected uh, with your faith. Stay connected to Jesus. Um, you will always have highs and lows in your life. Uh, not everything is going to go as you think they should go or that you want them to go. But uh, with that connection with Jesus, um, he, he will give you that foundation that is needed to be able to tackle those highs and lows uh, in a way that will be uh, positive for you and that will keep you strong and keep you moving forward. Well, good luck. Uh, good luck in the future uh, in school and work. Uh, we, we have high hopes for you guys. We know that you're going to be uh, successful in, in all that you do. Um, the church family, uh, your church families will be praying for you and know that we will support you through um, through all the coming years. So congratulations uh, on, uh, on your graduation class of 2020. The thing I am most thankful for about high school is the people I've been able to meet. I'm thankful that I've been able to form relationships with my classmates, both in and outside of Leroy. I've been able to meet amazing people that have that I hope to keep with me and for the rest of my life. I am also thankful for my church family. You have been there for me and all of the teens. I am thankful for the many supporters I have had from my church family in all of my activities. The one thing I am thankful for about the past four years of high school is all of the friends I have made and all the people I've been surrounded by at school and in my community. One way God has helped me in the past four years is he has given me the confidence to get out of my comfort zone. In the past four years, I have been able to participate in 14 theatrical productions, and in each, I have had to step out of my comfort zone in some way. I thank God for giving me the confidence to do this because without his help, I do not think I would be where I am today. In addition to this, I'm thankful for the way God has used my church family to help me navigate high school. From the countless pieces of invaluable advice I have I have been given to all the prayer and support this congregation has provided me. I feel incredibly blessed by all they have done for me. I feel like God has helped me over these past four years become a better person than what I was at the beginning of high school and that has helped me really mature from who I was. In the fall of 2020, I will be attending Illinois State University, majoring in acting and theater education. I hope to be able to form a strong community and support system like the one I have grown up with in Leroy when attending ISU. Eventually, I hope to teach and direct, creating positive theatrical experiences for my students. And I hope to go on to Parkland Community College and take their welding certificate program and go on to become a successful welder. And friends, at this time, as we hear our closing song, I would invite us to continue to worship the Lord through the gifts that we bring. Let us have our offering. One, two, three, four.
One quick announcement before we part ways. So as part of Senior Sunday, we are hosting a new competition here at the church that we are calling Panther's Best. And basically the way this competition works is we would invite you to send in any picture of any student. It doesn't have to be a graduate, but any student doing something to celebrate the end of the school year and all that they've accomplished or to celebrate their graduation and in order to up the ante and make this a really serious and kind of fun competition we have decided that not only are we accepting any picture of any student but it can be from any year so if you have a really great graduation or end of school year picture from 1972 or 1988 or 2009 it doesn't matter any year feel free to send in the picture to us in order to compete for a chance to win and be panthers best in one of three categories category number one best party which is the best graduation party or best end of school year celebration two best family which is the picture of the best uh, thing that a family member or a family did in order to celebrate uh, a student graduating or a student ending the school year. And three, best first day of summer, 
which is the best picture of something that you did on the first day of summer vacation. Uh, the three winning students or the three winning families will receive uh, gift cards from Millie's so you can eat a mountain of ice cream in order to start off the summer on the right foot. Uh, all the details for this competition, Panther's Best, will be shown on a slide in just a second at the end of the service, uh, or you can also find it on our Facebook page. But whenever you have any pictures of any student or graduate that you want to send in for this competition, you can text them to me. Again, my phone number is in the video description of this Facebook video, or you can email them to us at info at leroyumc.org, or you can send them to us in a Facebook message, whatever works best. Uh, and we are accepting pictures today and throughout the week. So anytime throughout this week, and we'll announce the winners uh, next Sunday. But friends, with, uh, with all that being said, I would now invite you to receive the final blessing. Now go forth into the world to rejoice to rejoice at all the ways that god has moved in your life over the past few years to rejoice for all the blessings that you have in your life this morning and to rejoice that even though this day may not unfold as we expect the future god has for our lives is so much greater than anything we ever could have expected and may the blessing of Almighty God be with each and every one of you now and evermore. Amen. Congratulations to all of our graduates and friends. The service has ended. Go in peace. He's roaring.